should like play some music or something while I do this, right? While I tweet slash post on Facebook. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so today is National Burger Day. I got rid of the face camera because I didn't feel like it was adding much to the stream other than like a super washed out picture of me because of our lighting. And uh, this video came out on the um, it's like Burger, Burger Time YouTube channel. What is it? It's just like, he's like this burger historian. I forgot his name already. But he's a super cool dude. And he reminded me of this burger that uh, basically my mom made like all growing up, even though that, even though she's a, thanks for the reset, Tommy. Uh, Brazilian, like it was always just this super simple burger, Cuban bread, smash burger, potato sticks, ketchup. That's essentially it. That's like the whole thing. I got a lot of nostalgia wrapped into it, up into it, and this guy on this YouTube channel, it's like a Munchies food channel, he um, reminded me of it, and uh, I decided that I wanted to make it today for National Burger Day. So it's pretty simple, um, it's just ground chuck. We're gonna like really finely dice, dice some onion and mix it. I don't normally put anything in my beef when I make burgers, much like he says in his video, but uh, finely diced onion, kind of making like almost like a chorizo rather than a burger, but with, like, with no pork or anything. And then just chorizo flavors, cumin, paprika, onion, garlic, um, salt, pepper. Awesome, thank you. Um, I didn't change anything other than get rid of the face cam. So <laughs> maybe it's because it's so quiet in here and Sam, we have finally got Sam's nails clipped so he's not clacking around. Um, oh, the burger sounds great, not my voice. <laughs> awesome, um, anyway. And then I made these awesome little Cuban rolls um, from a recipe, uh, King Arthur flour recipe. Um, I, I, I uh, improvised a little bit. They're a little denser than I would like. I think I need to use a different type of flour next time, but they taste really good. So a little, a little burger roll, a little chorizo-esque patty, and then uh, these guys, the, uh, the old uh, potato sticks. I was gonna. I considered making them. I don't know if you, the light might be too bright. Uh, no, there we go. Um, but uh, I fr I fried too much stuff on this channel, so I just bought them. And then uh, the other thing that I didn't, my mom never did, but apparently is traditional to this, so it's kind of like an adventure. Is that you make this like sauce that while you're make cooking the burger, um, you drench it in this sauce that's like hot sauce, vinegar, water, honey, um, garlic, a little soy sauce. And it kind of caramelizes all those flavors like in the meat when you're cooking it. So uh, yeah, let's get going. I'm gonna start, and then, oh, as you're cooking it, that's the other thing, you add more like diced onion to it. I fucking love onions. So um, this is like, I'm all about this. Onion burger. Just like simple, like little yellow onion. And we're gonna very finely dice it. He says uh, grated, but uh, I'm confident in my knife skills. I'm not a fan of grating an onion because it just like turns into water. Like I would rather just use onion powder if I like absolutely had to grate something. And I'm not usually a proponent of the horizontal slice on the onion, but uh, I want this to be very fine. So I'm gonna roll it in. And then we got a pound of uh, ground chuck. So that's like a good amount of fat to uh, protein ratio. Good for burgers. Go to that guy. And then like, yes, you're just looking for like super fine dice. I need to renegotiate how this light is set up over here. Always learning with this stream. When you do it once a week, you forget all the lessons that you learned the time before. 
And then uh, when you do it even less than once a week, which was the case during this quarantine, you forget even more. So, you know what? I appreciate you sticking around. So one full yellow onion, I'm just gonna throw the whole shebang in here and dice some more when the time comes to uh, add add the onions like pre-smash. Cause these will kind of like macerate a little bit with like the uh, salt and such. Tommy, you've been here since the beginning. What do you think of, did I ask you what you think about the new camera angle? The, from the right rather than from the left? We'll five, close the garlic. We're really gonna turn this into a paste, pasty pasty. I'll show you a little trick for that. I don't normally like do garlic this fine, but I don't want chunks of garlic in the burger. I also feel like garlic has like all these super important like essential oils in it. And when you do this, you're kind of like smooshing it all into the board. But uh, I think it'll be fine for this. And then uh, take a little pinch of salt, like coarse salt, and pour it right on top of the onion. Or the garlic, rather. You want to do this on the edge of your board. and. Put the tip of your knife down and then use the, the grain of the salt to kind of create this like garlic paste. You can like see like the crazy amount of moisture coming out of the the garlic and the garlic picks up a lot of I don't know like doesn't come over here whatever's living in your board but that's okay uh, I sanitize these things very regularly but you could probably go a little finer than that but I'm gonna go that about that fine scoop all this up. Excellent. I'm glad that you like it. I'm trying. I tried to like streamline because I got to set up and break this thing down every time I want to stream. So I'm trying to streamline it a little bit to be less of a hassle. Maybe one day I can be like old baddish and have like a streaming kitchen. You know. We'll see. So onion, garlic, beef. We're gonna add a bit more salt in there. peppers to my grinder. More peppercorns. Shit. From Spiceology. Not an actual sponsor of the uh, stream, but I really like their products a whole lot. And you know what? A boy can dream. I'm just going to add a, a few right now. Oh my god. I drop all the way over here. Great. One sip of beer and I'm already this clumsy. And dropping a vital piece of my pepper melt into the garbage disposal. So, you know, find me on stream fails. It's not the first time this has happened. Go ahead and get the handy old little wash. So 
is just a lesson in I should be more prepared. Excellent. Pepper. Uh, we're gonna do a little cumin, like a, maybe like a tablespoon, and then like two tablespoons of paprika. And we'll keep it a little simple. I could probably like throw some like oregano or something in here. Oh, that was a little bit extra. Two and a half tablespoons. And we're gonna grab a glove. Hand. I've never learned my lesson on that. Just before I spill it. And just uh, kind of work all that onion and spice together. So when my and this guy in this little like mini documentary about this Cuban burger talks about it, but my dad grew up in Cuba and um, one of the things that uh, he mentioned, because he grew up like in that hyper, uh, like Castro had just taken over, like it was very, very communist when he lived there, um, is that basically the state seized all the beef. And that's uh, part of the reason that well, I mean, pigs were very popular already, but part of the reason they're so popular now is that it was like a crime to slaughter a cow without, like, a, um, you know, a permit. And they were so highly prized that almost, like, nobody ate beef over there for a long time. And so this recipe kind of disappeared. This style of burger disappeared from there. And... Uh, migrated to Miami and like you can still find this you know there's like really good Cuban fritas places in Miami um we're gonna plug this thing in god damn it dude <laughs> um I've been to one a long time ago when I didn't realize that like how kind of important it was But uh, yeah, pretty interesting. Okay, so now we're gonna make our like little sauce. And I'm gonna just make it directly in the squeeze bottle. Um, we're gonna do, uh, we are gonna grate some more garlic. I'm gonna use the microplane this time to not kind of show off a dumb trick. And also so that I can get this like directly into the bottle. You obviously don't really actually need a squeeze bottle to do this, but uh, mildly helpful. At least, you know, I watched this guy make the video or the burger. So, two cloves of garlic in here, grated. Try and get all this stuff off the microplane. Do a touch of soy sauce, maybe like two ounces. Red wine vinegar, uh, a little less, ounce and a half. Hot sauce, which uh, this bottle of Cholula is almost empty. I'm just finishing it up. 
So that's probably like one tablespoon there. Open a fresh one. Impossible though. Cholula is great. Cholula is the best like grocery store hot sauce in my opinion. Maybe like a couple tablespoons of hot sauce. And then uh, recipe calls for sugar, but sugar you have to heat up to um, resolve. And you know, why not just use honey? So a couple tablespoons of honey and then tomato paste. I feel like you could probably use ketchup right here because we're going to use, that's like the only acceptable condiment for these apparently is ketchup. Um, but uh, I think the tomato paste, might, tomato paste might give like a little bit more of a concentrated flavor. So we're going to roll with that. And it's like, really work it all together. Give it a taste. It's gonna spill everywhere. Oh, no, it's pretty thick. So yeah, that's like very intensely flavored. Spicy, salty, acidic. It's really good. So we're gonna give it a shot. If I need to dilute it, I'll do it in round two. But this is kind of new territory for me. And uh, we got our that. We're gonna need a little bit more diced onion to smash into the burger, which like. Seems excessive, but I'm all, you know, like I said, I'm all about it, so give it a shot. So this is a smash burger. I don't have the greatest way to smash things. I don't have like one of those big spatulas. So we're gonna improvise a little bit, like with our pastry cutter. Let's see how it goes. Uh, we're gonna get some oil in the pan and get started. This guy's nice and hot, which. Uh, I feel like for these type of burgers, it's supposed to be. We're gonna put a little bit of onion down. And we're gonna take like a decent chunk of the beef. Ball it up. So maybe like a three ounce burger patty. Put the ball right there. was not the best tool for that. That's okay, we shall persevere. Disregard that. Just really smash it down flat. Stream fails today. You know, I feel like I had one of these things and I don't know where it went. I had one 
whole time. Definitely not the prettiest shape right now, but that's okay. The onions are getting like really like caramelized and like pretty awesome. And then we're going to take some of this sauce right on top. Test one of our buns while this is going on. Give it a flip. Reasons to buy a blackstone, I guess. We're going to give this another go here in a moment. But it looks like it's going to taste good, and it smells like it's going to taste good. It's just pretty ugly. Haven't opened one of these in forever. The potato stick. Toasted bun. Smash burger. That looks really good. A little bit more onion as per the video. Potato sticks. Get this one out of here while it's. We gotta grab the ketchup. Put the same bottle of ketchup in this house for ages. That'll be the uh, the tester. Mind to taste later. Good boy, Flitton. Making a lot of mistakes today. But you know, that's the basic idea. Cuba frite. Cuban frite, rather. On a homemade bun. Let's set that one aside. We're going to try this again. A little less burny of the onions. I'm going to wipe this pan out. Thanks. Thanks, Normal. I've had this like nonstick pan for ages. I take really good care of my pans for the most part, but inevitably they will start to warp. Like, I think I've had this thing for like 12 years. And beyond that, it's like barely nonstick anymore. Oh boy, look at all those dark onions. Um, maybe time to invest in a new one. Or a blackstone, you know? Maybe I'll maybe I'll maybe I'll join the cult. Alright, let's try that again. We're gonna go a little bit lower temperature though. And uh normal I told you I would fry an egg. So we're gonna do that. We'll we'll put an egg on one of them. Try 
dropping stuff left and right. So like, if you notice, I didn't season the burger, and I'm gonna give this one a bite just to double check. But, uh, well, I seasoned the meat. I didn't like re-season again because of the sauce situation that we made. But, uh, that is a child, my childhood burger right there. I'm not complaining at all. Man, oh man. I feel like the bun needs like a little bit more sauce though. Maybe I'll add like a little bit of mayo to the bottom of this one next time. And uh, portion out this burger with a spoon so I don't have to like just wash my hands a million times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? I didn't put the onions down like an idiot. That's okay. This one's gonna be a little big. Put the onions on top for the flip. at the bottom a little bit, A little bit of the dukes. These things are super tasty. I forgot how tasty these things are. I'm not certain my little egg pan is going to work on this uh, burner norm, but uh, I'll cook it over here if I have to. Over, what, did you, what did you say, over medium last week? Dukes on the bottom bun. Much less of a mess that time, definitely too hot of a pan. 
to the first one. Add a few more onions on there. Way too many potato sticks. Okay, we're important ketchup. Oh god, oh, Jesus. This stuff is so runny. It's not Heinz, that's for sure. This one I thought I got over my clumsiness on for the show. Oh yay yay. Should have done that on a plate, huh? And we're going to put an egg on this one. So we'll make a little space next to the prototype and clean this disaster up before we decide to fry egg. Away. But let's see if this works with this fan. I don't think it's going to. It does. Nope. So we'll cook it over here. Good morning. So you can probably tell by looking at me, Norm, that I'm of the opinion that you should always cook eggs in too much butter. And uh, so we got like a half a, ta half a tablespoon, of, maybe like a full tablespoon of butter in there. Oof, got hot.
you just want to melt the butter. You don't want to uh, turn it too brown because you're going to be cooking this longer. And if you start off with brown butter, then by the end of the time you're done cooking the egg, even though it's just <clears throat> a few minutes, you're going to end up with black butter. And nobody likes that. It's like super bitter. Yeah, so like this amount of butter. One egg, right in there. Shell, piece of shell and all. Scoop that guy out. You kind of want to leave a beef for the most part. We're just going to give it one flip, obviously. That's what. That's the definition of over medium. Can't be flipping your eggs back and forth. Once the uh, white sets a bit, that's where I like to add the salt because otherwise it kind of gets like into the white rather than, I don't know, it, I don't like the texture that results from that. It's a noticeable difference for me. So the white's a little bit set. Decent pinch of salt. shake to make sure that she's not sticking. And so you're like sliding around in here and you have all this like free butter. And you kind of just like swirl it around and you notice that the butter starts to come up over the top and uh create these like air pockets. This is like my favorite way to cook an egg is to not even flip it, just let basically base the egg. What time, what time are you cooking on? Oh, just straight up medium. Five right in the middle. We're off the heat so this process is gonna slow down and not gonna get as many bubbles, but if you just do this and let the butter like lap over itself, or lap over the egg, you'll have a perfectly cooked egg without ever having to flip it. And it won't have a runny white. You can see there's two parts to the white. There's like the big loosey goosey part. And then I don't know if you can tell because of the dumb light that I'm, that I, but there's a ridge here and that's like the inner white. And that's usually the part that people have a hard time setting. Set that there for another 15 seconds to get heat back up in the pan. My first job at a culinary school was uh, the egg, the omelet station at the Ritz Carlton. So I'm not too bad at cooking it. And uh, just go ahead and, uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but one flip. And then for over medium, I usually give it like, what is that? Uh, like 15 seconds. You can just take it off the heat at this point. Go ahead and replate this nicer burger with the egg on it for the old Instagram hashtag National Burger Day. That was a bit of a disaster stream. I don't think it was as bad as the uh, the dumplings, but that's okay. And you can like poke the oat yolk a little bit to tell if it's you know over easy, over medium. You're kind of looking for like this like jammy consistency. I'm not going to actually mess with this ketchup anymore. It's been too much of a nightmare. And then slide it right out onto the burger. Boom. A little more potato sticks for aesthetics. Boom. Now, the burger is ridiculous because the bun doesn't even sit on top. But there's an over medium egg in there. You want to, shall we pop it open? Um. Nice 
gift back. Actually, first things first, I'll take my photo. Actually, no, I'll cut it up and take a photo. A little bit of a runny yolk, but it's like a not completely liquid. There you go. Missed the egg. Yes, you did. <laughs> You're gonna have to uh, rewind. Tommy can give you the notes, though. I'm gonna take another bite of this thing because actually it was really good despite being kind of a shit stream. It's damn delicious. If I go to Burger Verse, I get four. Oh my god. That's a lot of cholesterol, bro. I mean, I'm sure the sausages and all that other stuff are, you know, a better option, but. I do love eggs. What's your favorite breakfast spot? Dear Lord. <laughs> you know the place used to be really good until they opened the, the big the big new one was that uh the town the townhouse. Uh was that what it was called? It's a yellow building now. At least go to Kiki's dude. Kiki's got like the best breakfast potatoes on the planet. But you don't eat you don't I guess you don't order the potatoes, so irrelevant. I'm gonna put this meat in the fridge for purposes of making Sarah burger later. That was my spot, and then I got mad. <laughs> the new one's bad, though, right? Like, it was good when it was small, and now the new one sucks, because it's, like, too big, and they have too many people that go in there. Let me turn this off, because it's, I feel like it's making me hot. But look how, I feel like it's going to get so much darker in here. I guess it's not that bad. I guess I don't need the, the dumb light. Like, you don't have to wait for the thing to focus, you know? <laughs> Kiki's potatoes are weird, right? I like Kiki's potatoes. That's what I order every time I go there. I get uh, potatoes, sausage links, and eggs, and I just make like a situation. But I, uh, I get, I get getting bad eggs and not wanting to go back to a spot. There's also that place like Metro Diner that opened up right before we moved from that side of town. But uh, that's like a chain, I think, which isn't you know a bad thing. Kiki's is a chain too. But, um, yeah. All right. Well, it's six o'clock. I always get them like I, you can ask for them extra crispy. They're like steamed and then they're like crisped up on the on the flat top because they do like such a huge volume that it would be impossible to just have like a giant pile of potatoes on there. So they steam them out. And then crisp them up with like onions and, and seasoning and stuff like that. They also have Cholula Kiki's, which is like the best part of it, because it's the best. It's the best commercial hot sauce. But uh, it's six o'clock, boys. I gotta go grab the the chumbo. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, happy National Burger Day. Uh, apologize, it was kind of a disaster stream, but it's gonna happen from time to time, and I just need to deal with that and do this more often. Uh, but uh, see ya. Now you don't get to watch my awkward faces. I look for the stop streaming button.